I thought I'd start with this, which is kind of the, a little bit of the thread or the kind of the heartbeat of, of my story today. And you've heard a lot about the design thinking and the design process that a lot of these folks have gone through, very powerful tools. And I just want to emphasize that empathy at the beginning for me is something that I think is really what is the heartbeat of the project when you move forward. And a lot of times when you move forward into the iteration and prototyping and some of the design phases that you go through, you need to actually refocus back and see what the empathy was that actually got you started at the beginning. So I thought I would just share, share a quick story with you guys. And this is a little tough story to tell, but I'm going to give it a shot. Um, so I had just finished um, designing a big MR scanner. How many people here have an MR scan? It's a big oh, MRI scan, oh my gosh, a lot of you guys, so don't charge the stage. <laughs> um, so I had just finished uh, designing this big MR scanner, and I was very proud. I think I had worked on this thing for probably about two years. And you know, doing, I'm an industrial designer, and I was doing the enclosures and the controls and displays and the coils and patient transfer, um, that kind of stuff. And I was so excited to see this, uh, the first product that we installed. So I went, went to see it in its actual environment in the hospital. So I was just running through this hospital to check out my new product that I had just finished. I'm really excited. And I kind of almost like barged in, you know, took my wallet and all the metal stuff out of my pockets, you know, and ran in and was, you know, with my baby, you know, and I was just a proud papa, basically. And um, I remember the technologist coming in and saying, you know, we have a patient that's going to be coming through, so could you step out for a little bit? I said, sure, no problem, I'll come back in, we can talk later. And I remember walking out and I was standing in the hallway, and this is kind of what I saw down the hallway. I saw this young family coming down the hallway, and I'm just standing in the hallway, and they're coming toward, and I can tell as they get closer, the little girl is weeping. And as they even get closer to me, I notice the father just leans down and just goes, remember, we've talked about this, you can be brave. And they turn to walk into the MR suite, and I kind of follow them in. And I still remember it like it was today, guys. I'm standing behind the little girl. She's probably about seven. And I'm looking into this environment that I was just standing in. I was just in there, in this environment, just you know, doing my happy dance, right? And um, she just freezes. And I, looking at her angle and just seeing in that same environment where I was just standing, I realized that this is something totally different. On the wall is that you know, horrible warning sticker. You know, it's got the magnet and the big exclamation point. It's got that yellow and black tape like on the thing, like, you know, almost like an accident scene. Um, you know, everything looks really kind of like beige. You know, it's got this kind of weird colored flooring and you know, just kind of everything's bleached out. And then the room itself is kind of dark and it kind of has those flickering fluorescent lights. And the machine itself, that I designed basically looked like a brick with a hole in it. And then, of course, an MRI for you folks that have had one, um, it is just a terrible noise. So the little girl just starts to really cry. I mean, she's just breaking down. And I can tell you guys, I'm standing behind and I see these parents. And for you guys that are parents, they're looking at each other. And they don't have to say a word because they don't know how they're going to get their child through this. So that was a huge awakening for me. So the challenge that we have here is you've got that little guy, and he needs to go through a scan in that. And what does that look like to you guys? What does that machine look like? Big, big clamp, looks like a stapler. I mean, it, it looks like a transformer. It's just ridiculous. And guys, this is a color picture. This is a color picture. So really this, um, this experience the family goes through and the child goes through looks like those little footprints on the bottom. It looks like an anxiety curve. And that really starts when they first understand that they need a scan or they're in their car coming to the hospital. And it just starts to ramp up as they get to the hospital. And you know how it is. You get on like nine elevators and you follow the blue line on the floor. And you get to the, you know, you get to the site. And when they, see the, when they come in contact with this piece of equipment, you know, the tears start to come way up in there. And actually, at the bottom of that arc, it really doesn't even flatten out that much. Um, and just working with these, these young families and these parents, I um, spent some time with this one father, and I remember they had to sedate his, 
his son, and in this modality, nuclear medicine, they have to sedate the children about 80% of the time so they can scan them. And he was carrying his, his, his little boy out to the parking lot because he had had sedation. And I'm walking out with him just to thank him, and all of a sudden, he just stops. And he's got this kind of weird look on his face, and I'm like, what's up? And he goes, you know, I forgot where I parked my car. Why do you think he forgot where he parked his car? Absolutely. I mean, it's just, you know, and my hypothesis and some of the ideas I even had at the beginning, things like they would be worried about, you know, are they going to diagnose what's wrong with their child? Is insurance going to pay for this? You know, is my boss going to get mad because I had to take off work again? All those things that I thought he would be worried about and the family would be worried about, their number one thing was, how am I going to get my child through this? So this is where we started, and I just thought I'd throw this in. It's kind of a cool picture. Um, this is our first brainstorming session at a local uh, daycare. That's kind of cool. And you guys probably notice here are some of my very young designers, even younger than some of the high school kids that came up here. <laughs> I went to the source, um, and what was really neat about this one, I remember this little boy in the white there, and he was actually had the crayons, and he was actually just sticking them in the cracks. He wasn't coloring like some of the other children that were down the way there, and I realized right off the bat when I was looking at this little boy and he's just sticking those crayons in the crack, that I had to learn more about some of the developmental stages of children and some of these things that would cause the anxiety um, for this to see if I could make it better. So, you know, I tried myself, and I told you guys, you know, I basically failed at my job when I did the other, when I did the scanner. So I got some experts. So here's a Fern Schupeck up at the top. I love her pose. She's very passionate. Um, and she's the director of the Betty Brin Museum in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where I'm from. And um, both her and her team came in, and we did lots of brainstorming sessions actually at the museum, up with the kids, down. They have a really cool area. Um, these are actually, most of the people that are on that picture uh, on the right there um, are customers, actually bringing the customers into this innovation, this ideation session with us to come up with some really strong solutions. So we have the director of radiology there, Kathleen Capson, and Sarah is a child life specialist, and Steve um, is a nurse. Just great team to do that, and these are just some of the, the sketches here. And you know what came very apparent to me, um, kind of in the middle of this, especially working with the kids, is what is three kitchen chairs and a blanket? Fort, Fort. castle, boat, shelter, truck, you name it. It's everything. And how long will they play with it? Forever. Because they've got this fertile imagination. They've got this place where they can go to do this. So what can we do with that? Um, this is actually a picture of my desk when I was working on this that I threw in here just to remind me that, you know, there's a lot of the right brain that went into this particular project. And I want to walk you through a couple of the rooms um, that we developed for these children to help them get through this situation. Um, these are some of our pilot rooms that are actually at the University of Pittsburgh, a UPMC um, hospital. And this one right here, this one actually is the same machine as you saw that was the stapler. We just worked a little bit on the design, softened it out. We have a ring now instead of that big, big clamp. But what's magical about this room is um, you got to imagine, you know, these pictures don't really do it justice. You got to imagine when you go in there, there's this like light blue sky that's cascading down. We tickle all the senses. We have aromatherapy in there. And I believe in this one, we have kind of a, like a water scent that's kind of a nice, kind of a, a soothing scent. It has a little lavender in it, kind of relaxing to do that. We have, um, of course, some of the graphics. So on the back, you'll see there's a waterfall that cascades off the wall. It comes down underneath the scanner, and there's a koi pond that comes out below. And what's magical about this part is uh, the rocks that are the border actually come, and they come down the room, and they go out the hallway. And what's so cute is you'll see the little boys and girls, and they're going like this. They're walking on the stones, right? They're coming into the room. And they're looking back and they're going, Dad, Mom, you, no, you got to get on the rocks. <laughs> and they're coming into the room. Three chairs and a blanket, right? They're in this special mode. They come into this room, guys, and the table actually lowers down into the water. It looks like it lowers down into the water, and it's a hollowed-out canoe. So there's a reason 
this hollowed out log that they're laying on their back and, they're, and, they're, and, they're, and then they tell them, you know, this is kind of like a boat and you need to hold still. It's real important so you don't rock the boat. And this is the magic. If you really hold still, the fish will start jumping over the top of you. And these kids are like statues. They're frozen. <laughs> and of course, you know, our detectors there slowly start to go around these kids and they just love it. And for a modality like this where they, they sedate them maybe 80% of the time, I think this machine's been in for a couple of years now, or about a, a little over a year, and they've sedated like two kids. Like .0 something something. <laughs> oh, here's a couple more. Um, this one is a, uh, this one's Pirate Adventure. This one is, it's funny, I, tell, I say they're all my favorite, so <laughs> get used to that. This, so this is my favorite. Um, so when you... So when you walk into this room, you come in on a dock, and the floor is kind of this watercolor. It's right here. You walk in, you come in on a dock. There's a shipwreck that's in the corner. There's some sand castles. Um, it's just beautiful. And then there's actually a plank there that you can see that you actually walk the plank to go on to the scanner, <laughs> of course, right? And what's kind of magic about this one, we couldn't affect the design as much on this one. Um, as we did on the nuclear scanner. But if you look really close, that picture on the bottom there, that black and white picture, is the same room as the top one. And if you look at the, we call it the bore, if you look at the circle where you go through, we put the steering wheel there with those radial handles on there. And look at that. That's the same piece of equipment. Doesn't it look like we stretched it out? You know, like maybe 20% or something? I mean, it looks so much bigger in that one. It's the same piece of equipment. Um, and this one, the story that goes with this, is pretty powerful. Um, there were a bunch of cabinets in this room, and when we were talking to the kids of the things that scared them in the room, this particular one, they said, you know, that reminds me of the dentist. Not a good thing. Um, so we, we, we got a little creative, and we made a tiki hut. You can see a little of the top of it there. We did a tiki hut there, and then for our aromatherapy in there, we put pina colada. <laughs> and what's so cute about that is the parents, when they come in, you know, and they're, they're in, there and usually the child's playing with, you know, around we have characters on the wall that they're hugging and they're naming. It's really cute. And you'll see the parents are looking at each other and they go, is that what I think it is? Is that? And you, you go, yeah, that's, P and they go, can we have one? So no, <laughs> sorry, we know that would help you get through, but no, I'm sorry, you can't have one. But um, I was actually, um, you know, what's nice about that too is when the children see their parents, you know, kind of elbowing each other, thinking, of, you know, about their honeymoon and Bermuda or something, you know, having a pina colada. They're smiling, and the children are really picking up on this. And I learned for sure, if you've got the child, you get the parent. If you get the parent, you can get the child, because they're always looking for that reaction, which is really cool. And the story that goes with this one is, so I'm talking with the, the parents about the pina colada, actually, and um, the little girl had already just had her scan. And... Um, I'm talking with the parents, and the little girl keeps coming up, and she's pulling on her mom's shirt. And about on the second or third time, you know, the mom, you know, kind of interrupts, and she goes, what is it, honey? And the little girl looks up, and she says, can we come back tomorrow? <laughs> so I'm just, you know, that's a pretty powerful thing. You know, I had gone from, you know, really thinking, I, and I did screw up, to having this little girl say, can we come back tomorrow? So unfortunately, I was doing exactly what I'm doing here. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked down at the floor, and I can see the tears hitting the floor, you know, and I'm just going, oh, man, this sucks. <laughs> and, you know, I don't have a Kleenex like I don't have now. Uh, and... But I look over, and standing next to me is the technologist, and I see that she's shaking. And I'm going, oh no, this is not good. <laughs> so I look up at her, she's bawling. She has mascara coming down her face. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, oh man, this is not good. I can see my performance re review now, you know. Uh, you know. <laughs> next year, try not to make the customer cry. <laughs> I don't know. 
So, um, you know, I, it was a, that was a tough experience, but I remember going in later that day and talking with her, and she was sitting in the room, her little, it's hard to see in here, but she, her window, she looks out the sandcastle. And I put my hand on her shoulder, and I just said, I'm really sorry, I really didn't, and she stops me, and she looks up, and she really just says, you don't understand. This experience reminded me of why I got into healthcare. So with this environment of, you know, it's probably like a lot of us that work in industry and stuff, you know, there's all this crap, you know, there's HIPAA laws, there's all of this stuff that just gets in the way. You know, our sophisticated medical equipment is really hard to work on, you know, it, all that stuff gets in the way. She had forgotten why she got into healthcare and it was to help kids. So that's what she got. So, you know, though I really had this kind of very specific focus on children and the families, I, I didn't even quite realize that it really cascaded out to the, um, to the parents really good. Um, I have a couple more I'd love to show you here. Um, this one's cool. This one actually is um, Coral City. This one is actually in an emergency room. So can you imagine the hectic craziness of an emergency room and all of a sudden here's this nautical adventure and you can see it has these beautiful blue walls and they dim the lights. And in this one, there's a disco ball in the back and we hit it with white light. And it looks like bubbles everywhere. It's unbelievable. Um, what, and in this one, I think they have like this really subtle harp music. I mean, it's mesmerizing, especially in the MR. It's really cool. And of course, they get on a yellow submarine and they go up and they go in. Um, this one, of course, is my favorite. <laughs> yeah. um, this is uh, being a camper, too. This is, um, this is cozy camp. This is really kind of neat. So you come into the room. You can see it's kind of got that purple wall. It's kind of like the evening. There's a thousand stars. You can almost see that they're moving on the walls and the ceiling. And um, the child comes in, and that table lowers down, and it's a sleeping bag. And they get on the sleeping bag, and they go up, and they go inside the tent. And what's really neat about this is the actual technologist can't be in the room, and this is a PET CT scanner. Um, so they actually go over here in their camper, and that's their window that the tech <laughs> look out. It's kind of cool. It's really neat. Um, so so that's, that's pretty fun, and that's a cool picture. Um, and you know, you know, if you're not having fun, it's half your fault. You know? You know, this is sometimes, you know, this kind of stuff can, um, even though it's very empathetic and there's some really neat stuff in here and there's a real meaning, you can have a lot of fun. And we did this with some of the development team um, that worked with us, which is really neat. And probably the last thing I just want to leave um, you guys with here is really that um, when you design for meaning, good things will happen. And sometimes if you go the other way around, which a lot of times we do where you're you're designing for money or you're designing for some of these other things and you're hoping that meaning comes, it doesn't work that way. And though we got the sedation to be um, reduced significantly here, and I think their patient, patient satisfaction in this hospital went up 92%. And their patient volume also went up, so they're able to get more children in in a day, which makes the, um, the actual waiting list and some of the time that you have to wait for a scan a lot less. So the you know, a lot of people ask me things like, are you really proud of those things? Which I think I really am. And they ask me if I kind of measure the success of this on those things. And I'll be honest with you, I don't. What I really think I would measure myself in this kind of a project is have I had influence on that conversation in the car on the ride home for that family? And if I've had that opportunity to make that a different kind of conversation for this family, and you've seen some things already in this great, some great talks on how you interact with healthcare, if it is just a totally different conversation in that car, and it's maybe one of those things where they just embrace the experience a little bit better, because a lot of times in healthcare, you know, this is like a speed bump in the road for these folks. And if we can just make that a little bit smaller speed bump, if we can turn it into more of an experience, I think it's going to be a real positive thing. Thank you very much.